you've got to see this. Those are the most common passwords for 2022. And if you don't see any issue with that, then you are the perfect target for any hacker out there. Hello guys, I'm Costa, your Red Bull Hack Academy. And as already mentioned, we're going to be discussing passwords, password strength, and different ways to brute force passwords. There are multiple types of brute forcing, but we're going to be focused on two main ones who are really seen in the wild a lot. One is pure brute forcing when we're trying to guess out all combinations of different characters, numbers, symbols. That's the first one. And the second one is when we're presented with a word list, which contains, let's say, hundreds of thousands or even millions of combinations of already leaked passwords from, let's say, Darknet or different data dumps that uh, other hackers have uh, acquired in a way. From the perspective of a normal user, such as yourself most of the time, there are multiple ways of authentication and usually you use authentication to log into YouTube, Facebook, Google, you know, all those platforms. But from the perspective of, an, of a hacker, there are multiple types of authentication used in different services across networks, across systems. We're going to see how we're going to attack those systems uh, by using brute force methods of attack. Let's begin. There are multiple tools that you would like to check out. For example, Ncrack. You should definitely check for the upcoming tools, uh, one of which is Ncrack, the menu by Man Ncrack. And um, WFUS could also be used for brute forcing and conducting online uh, brute force attacks. But um, Medusa is another great tool which we can use to attack different services and protocols. Patator is another great one. As you can see, those are all the services which you can attack. FTP, SSH, Telnet, SMTP, etc. It's really good. But today we're going to focus more on Hydra. And uh, if you write that one liner, you see all the supported versions or you could also do that and you see all the supported services that hydro can attack and uh, those are pretty much the most services that you would see in in the real world today we're going to conduct online attacks online attacks are when we are attacking a live host over the network and we are attacking usually protocols through http by doing post or get requests probably it's gonna get clearer if i give you an example so this is my local ip and if i'm right i think that the target for our attacks is located at 130 let's see yes that is correct i've decided to use something that you have already seen in one of our last videos so this is a WordPress application. You've already seen that in one of our latest videos. It's called Hacking WordPress. So there are multiple functionalities, but uh, we'd like to attack the login field. Why? If we compromise the credentials, we'll get to the management panel. And from the management panel, then we can uh, do almost anything. Like we can lock out the real administrator from his own application. We can deface the application. We can delete the application. We can compromise the system. Basically anything. Last time, if I remember correctly, we have used Burp Suit, but now we're going to use Hydra. For that to happen, let's first create a request. I'll press Control Shift E. And then we're presented with the network. When I press login, we'll get a request. I'll click right click and I'll copy the curl request. I'll paste it here. And now I'll use that data over here to conduct a brute force attack. So Hydra is a really interesting instrument. Let's first see what it does. As you can see, th those are the examples of how to specify the usernames, how to specify the passwords. Uh, in this case, this is a, with a capital L, we specify 
username file and with capital P we specify password file. With smaller case it's uh, specifying the exact username or password that we would like to use. With dash C we specify a file which contains both the username and the password probably delimited with a comb in between. We can use Hydro to attack uh, that specific protocol HTTP. Let's do that. Hydro. And since we don't really know the username or the password, how are we going to approach attacking that specific service? So we're going to use a file that has both uh, different usernames and different passwords in a combination at once. Let's uh, see how such a file looks like first. I'll press less and I'll go to setlists which is located in user share word list setlists and uh, passwords default if I remember correctly uh, FTP and this is how it looks like. So those are really, really weak credentials. As you can see, we have anonymous, anonymous, root, root, password, admin, admin, local admin, local admin. So whenever we don't really have any users, we would use similar type of word list to try and guess out some really weak credentials in the beginning, of course. Hydro, and then we specify with capital C that specific file word list okay and then we'd like to uh, specify the host that we are attacking our target is located on 130 okay now um, let's see I'll copy this for future reference we will need we will need the logging, the logging PHP file, and uh, we'll probably need to start from here actually because the program is not going to be able to to see it itself. We will need to conduct an HTTP POST request, POST form. If the type of web application that you would be testing it on, if it has HTTPS then this form would be HTTPS instead of HTTP. This is important. Then uh, this is located at secret wp-login.php. So basically for Hydro to work, we need three things. We need the location, we need the username and password field, and we need a condition for it to discover if there is a successful guessing attempt or failed. So we already have the location. Now we need I'm sorry, let me scroll. Now we need this information here. You log test. Okay. However, we're going to delete the test and we will write like so. User. Pass. Then we delimit again. And our fail condition would be, let's see. So I would go back to the web application and I'll press Control U to look at the source code and see what code within the source code would not be available once we are authenticated. And this is something that you have to guess. In this case, I guess that the label for user login is not going to be available. Okay, so if the script doesn't see that specific label uh, but it's not gonna work like so I need it to be with a single quote let me let me look for something else just error I'll just copy this let's see if it's gonna work Okay, let me delete this. Let's see if that works. And it did work. It guessed 
a very very weak combination of course admin admin this is how we conduct http attack on a login form in this case it's a wordpress login form now that we have guessed the http we can also try to brute force the ssh or the ftp credentials hydra and let's say root dash capital p for a word list user share word list roku and then we'd like to specify our target which is this one the port which is 22 if i remember correctly and basically mention the service that we're attacking which is ssh and now the attack has started and we're trying to guess out the root password for that specific service ssh i'm not going to be waiting for it to finish so i'm going to stop the process but this is how you do it the protocol itself when we're trying to brute force it it doesn't really like a lot of threats threats are basically how many processes simultaneously are attacking that service when we're trying to brute force ssh it's recommended to run it with four threads and you can do it as so dash t for threads and four this is how you're going to prevent a lot of passwords or combinations being dropped out you can do the same for ftp by trying to guess out ftp credentials so hydra and this time i will be using the exact same ftp better default pass list it is the same target dot 130 port 21 and then ftp i'm not sure if it's gonna work like this let me see yeah it works all right you can also declare the attacking vector by writing it as so you don't need to sp to write the service at the end of the line you can just write it as so and again of course i'm not really gonna wait for it to finish even though there are only 66 login tries because there's only 66 combinations of passwords and usernames and uh, yeah it already finished zero valid password founds let me uh, provide you with an interesting example of how we can create word lists that could potentially contain a correct password for an individual that we would like to attack of course this is only done when we are engaged in a um, penetration test or we are hired legally please do not do not attack other people whom you do not have uh, the right to attack it's highly illegal and you could end up in prison so with that said Let's imagine that we are in an engagement and our target is a developer at uh, Microsoft. His name is uh, Lemongrass. <laughs> I don't know why. There is a, an instrument called Cup with a dash I for interactive. Oh, I, I don't even have it. Let me install that first. So that instrument is something that you can use to create a word list of potential passwords from information that you already know about the target. Let's say that you know the target's uh, birthday, that you know the target's workplace, or you know the name of the pet that he has, like his dog or the name of his cat and uh, you know the names of his kids or people that he cherish. During an operation, usually you would go and do a nosint, you would try to find his email addresses, you would try to find his uh, social networks and you would try to do a little bit of reconnaissance to understand your target. And usually the result is you would gather a lot of information about your target and sometimes you would have kind of public but also in the same time sensitive information sensitive because you see how this information can be used against you let's say that uh, we know the first name which is lemon uh, 
Simon with capital. And the surname is Grass. Then the nickname, let's say LG. And the birth date is something in the lines of 13th, 12th, 1685. Oh, wait, what? No, <laughs> 1965. Okay. And then we know that his partner's name is uh, Lea Boom. And then her birthday is 14th, 13th, 12th, 1968. And his child's name is, let's say, George. And he's being called Top G for some reason. All right. And then we can guess that his son is like two years old. All right. You must enter a... Oh, wait. Yes. So let's say it's born on the 1st of January and 2021 or two. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Pet's name. The pet's name is... Uh, Bob and the company is Microsoft so do you want to add some keywords about the victim let's say that we'd like to add something else something additional to what we already added so far he's a developer um, he likes summer summertime he likes jet ski and uh, he likes paragliding Okay, that's enough. So, do you want to add special characters? Yes. Do you want to add some random numbers? Yes. And the lead mode is basically using numbers instead of certain characters. For example, E would be 3, I would be 1, and yeah, you'll see what I mean. Yes. So we have created a word list of 70,000 words. We can also optimize that word list for specific reasons. Let's say that we're trying to attack a certain web application. That web application contains specific regulations, policies for, for the password. So no lesser than eight characters. It has to have symbols. It has to have uh, numbers, etc. Now let's optimize it. I'll paste that. All the words that are being contained in lemon.txt that are up to seven character symbols in length are going to be removed. And this is because we'd like to optimize that word list. There is no reason to have um, any words, combination of character symbols and, and numbers in, in the word list that is less than eight characters. For example, it could be 10, it could be anything else. Let's say that the password policy is no passwords less than 10 or 11, sorry, 11. So we do this and all words are being deleted, okay? So we also need to delete all words that do not contain uh, any symbols, okay? And then we'd like to specify all numbers from 0 to 9. So if a word is missing any of those numbers from 0 to 9, then it's going to be deleted. Oh, lemon. All right. So let's check out this uh, word list. So those are different combinations that has been created. And as you can see, there are multiple, multiple combinations. Now it, it started to look like something. It, it's with Bloom, the word Bloom and George, different combinations of George and dates, as you can see. So this is how it looks like. It goes on to how many words? Lemon. Right now there are 8,299 words. That's pretty powerful. So now we're going to see how to create a word list of usernames for a specific person. 
So just by knowing his first and last name or even his middle name, we can create a word list similar to what we're currently seeing here. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So as you can see, uh, this tool is called generate active directory username, but it's just AD. And this is how it looks like. There is a second tool called username anarchy, and it does exactly the same. It could be fed with the first, the middle and the last name, or it could also be fed with uh, different files, let's say word lists of names and potential combinations. So let's uh, download this. Okay. Go into it. And then we can straight up run that binary. And as you can see, I've just uh, inserted the first name, the last name, and then I'm feeding all the potential combinations into username.txt. Let's see the combinations. Sorry. Okay. And as expected, we have a couple of those combinations that could be potential usernames. We know the possible combinations. We can do the following KO grass and then Outlook, for example, or something like that. Now, having that word list, we can directly use it with Hydra, as previously mentioned, with capital L and then the usernames with capital P. And we specify the password that we have generated, which is uh, lemon.txt. And then we specify the IP that we would like to attack, the port, which could be SSH, and then the service, which is SSH. And there it is. We're currently using all the possible usernames that we know that may exist, actually. We're using really, really targeted word list of passwords, potentially used by that specific person. Sharing information on social media is sometimes dangerous. Don't be too paranoid, but just know the dangers of using weak passwords. In a matter of a minute or even less, I can generate 40 to 50,000 combinations of information that I can acquire from social media. My advice is to use really long passwords that is not logical. It's not logical. It's not a real word, but it's like different combinations of uh, symbols, numbers, any type of character, you know. All right, guys, I really hope that you have understood clearly the dangers of using weak passwords that you take additional measures to protect your accounts. If you have learned something new about brute forcing, like the video, subscribe to our channel for more of that in the future and see you in our next video.